Hello, it's Philip, Land Surveyor, Southern California. Um, doing this at my home, just uh, it's too damn hot outside. So, I wanted to show um, some common markers or um, nails and hubs and ways that we mark um, what we're doing, be it um, uh, rough grade or um, uh, uh, stationing, um, uh, curb, gutter, uh, marks on the curb. Uh, so if you're looking for the survey marking points, um, you might come across some of these um, uh, what could be considered monuments or, um, or just reference points in general. Uh, the lath aren't, aren't going to be shown just because they're just um, the information relating to the point. So if we start with the wood, um, this uh, we we just call it a one by two, so it's uh, you know approximately one inch by two inches. I don't know why we call it a one by two when we don't deal with inches, but that's what it is. Um, there's there's another thing called a called a two by two, and so basically it's just a square square one of these hubs. And this used to be the um, the main thing that we used, or the main item that we used when we staked curb, rough grade, anything, and so we'd pack up a, a hub bag filled with, you know, 50, 50 hubs, uh, different lanes. You know, this one's an 8-inch, there's 6-inch, there's 12-inch. And uh, we'd have to lug around a 8-pound uh, sledgehammer and then a lath rack. And basically, this gets driven down into the dirt. And if it was rough grade, since it's plus or minus a tenth, we would just, um, you don't have to tack it or anything. Uh, I know some people do tack rough grade. You're crazy, but um, we don't out here. And but if you did have to um, tack something good, then the wood gave you an area. You know, this would be set within you know 500 c either way, and then it gave you an area to put in a um, cup tack, which is right here. So there's like a little barb. Try to get it focused. There's a little barb on there that um, sticks into the wood, and then. You know, you can hammer it in, but, you know, it would go on top. So that's where the point fell, and then hammer it on top. And it usually didn't split it too much. Um, there's other um, other hubs, so these were basically just, you know, half half the size. We called these things guineas. I don't know um, uh, what they're really called, um, but... We've seen a lot of people now use these as um, kind of like how we use 60D nails now. But um, so they'll set them and then they'll just use their marker and put a little X where that point actually lies. And you got to remember if we're doing a bunch of staking, these are just temporary points. So um, an X on there, you know, um, is fine or a punch or even when the cup tacks are fine. But um, these are being used a lot we've seen uh, to take the place of hubs. And both of these, if you want to, you can use these um, feathers so that you can find them later on. And uh, the feathers also work with the uh, 60D nails. 60D nails are probably what we use the most. Um, you know, basically anywhere on this nail, it'll be plus or minus a couple hundreds, but if, if, as long as you can get this in the ground and it holds a grade, it's fine. And you can put 50 of these in your in your pouch and you don't have to carry a hub bag anymore. Sometimes I'll still throw a couple hubs in my pouch uh, just in case it's going to be soft dirt. And I have the uh, maybe an opportunity to compact it or I'll use the hubs um, as, our, as our control points just because it's different than the nails. So if we have a job site full of nails... But, um, you know, you see a hub with a feather and um, an attack and then the lath around it, basketed around it. Uh, I like to use those as our, as our uh, control points. Also, um, it lets you know if, if it's been disturbed because if something were to hit this hub, it's probably going to be chipped or cracked or what have you. The nails sometimes are a little harder harder to um, to notice if they've been hit. Um, and then, you know, we tag, you know, we tie the flagging on in the field. So hubs, cup tacks, cup tacks are really only used for these um, hubs. When it comes to uh, asphalt, asphalt, concrete, stuff like that, um, these things we just call sea nails. They come in different lengths, but um, they're um, 
pretty cheap, so you can get a box of them, throw them in your pouch, and um, again, I, I use these as our temporary points. So if we're going to stake a bunch of uh, water line in it, and it's in the street um, or sewer or what have you, I use the sea nails. Uh, I'm really not going to go looking for them anymore, and um, they're a quick, cheap um, nail that works great in the asphalt, and um, you know you can always put flagging on them. And um, you know to make them kind of stand out, you know, just punch them through a little bit of flagging. But so if you come across these sea nails, normally um, these are just our, our uh, staking points. So they're probably not a control point or a monument or anything like that. Um, I use a lot of ram sets. So you can get these at Home Depot, and we use uh, ram sets a lot for our um, for our curb. Uh, PL prods and um, anything that we have to put in the concrete. So we'll normally drill a little pilot hole, knock this um, little plastic piece off, and um, so it has a nice pilot hole to go down into. Then we can put it through our tags and just a couple of whacks with a hammer, and it's in. Um, I use these sometimes for um, for like temporary control points and stuff. They uh, go in really well in the joins of uh, sidewalks and, and such. So um, if you come across these uh, ram sets, that's normally going to have a tag next to it, or you know we're using it um, to you know as the same way as these uh, C nails. It just all depends on which one you want. I either like the C nails for um, asphalt, and I like the ram sets for uh, concrete. If I have to, um, if I can set a point like in a joint or something like that. None of these nails will really go straight through concrete, so. You got to have a little bit of a crack or something like that for them to wedge in there. Um, put those tags away. Before there were these mag nails, um, there were these nails called PK nails, and the difference was is that if you used a PK nail and you wanted to find it again, it, it was not magnetic, so you'd have to punch it through a tin, and, uh, it, and then you can find it with it with a metal detector. Um, but the mag nails that they make right, or mag nail, uh, it's a magnetized. So they make really good, for me, they make really good control points. They got a little punch up on top, so the rod sits in there very well. And, um, and they come in different lengths. So these are like mag nails. Um, so if I were to set a control point in asphalt, I'm going to use these, maybe in conjunction with the tin, just so, you know, it just looks different than everything else out there. Um, but as you can see, there's some mag spikes, what they make right now, too. So these mag spikes, you know, have a big punch on top and um, come in different lengths. I still dr um, drill a pilot hole, um, even if it's in, in asphalt, you know, maybe, maybe this deep so that the last um, few hits with the hammer uh, wedge it in there really well. I don't like when things bend. And if I figure I have this 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 much play, I might as well um, you know, this much play. I might as well draw a pilot hole and make my life easier. Um, so if you come across these big mag spikes, they're probably going to be a monument out in California. If if the county calls for a spike and washer, you know you can. So that'd be a spike and washer. You know our number LS number and everything would be on there. What also counts as a spike are these um, galvanized spikes. I like these sometimes because they don't have a punch on top. So if the um, so let's say you're hammering it down and um, the point actually lands here on the side a little bit, you can actually use one of these mag spikes and make a nice big punch right punch right on the side. So you have all this area to play with. And there's some other spikes out there um, or some brass caps where you got a, a large area to actually put the punch. Where you um, where you want it, whereas these again, why I like to draw um, do the pilot hole is because you can't really re re punch this. So to get in the center, drill that pilot hole. Then if you need to knock it over a hundredth or two back and forth, you know you can do that on the on the last um, tenth or so. But mag spikes, mag nails. In California, um, you'll see a lot of these um, gin spikes. These are uh, cotton gin spikes. Uh, so this piece uh, picks up the cotton, and somebody thought it'd be a great idea to use these as our um, as our spikes. Uh, they don't bend easy. These the uh, galvanized ones bend really easy. 
Um, but you know, they can uh, fit, fit through the washers as well. And um, you'll see a lot of these out in California. And again, you got this nice um, punch that's, that's already there. Back in the day, um, we used to use railroad spikes. Uh, I, I forget if the county ever called them out, but so once you hammered this in, you could put a punch in there, you could put a chiseled X, but um, when you uh, do some older surveys, you'll uh, come across a lot of these. Uh, so we used to use railroad spikes for not just uh, monumentation, but also for um, uh, benchmarks. These would be hammered into a telephone pole, and then you'd have a nice uh, area here to put the, put the rod on. So before um, we were using ram sets and the, and the tags, we used to have to put in lead, nail, and, and tag. That's what would be called out by the county. So sometimes um, you're going to see um, a nail through the, through the brass tag sitting inside the curb and you wonder, you know, how they get that nail in there. Well, underneath that nail is this, um, is this lead. So what we'd do is we'd drill a hole in, on, um, into the top of the curb on that prod of the property line. Um, cut a little piece of lead, you know, uh, stick this lead inside the hole, uh, mark where, where it came to the top or just a little bit past, cut it and then pound it in that hole and then we'd set that nail, hammer the nail down into that hole and the lead and these little ribs on the nail here would, would uh, keep it in place. What we use these nails for also is if we need to set something in a concrete, so a lot of your property corners out in California are one or two inch iron pipe and then so you got that hole um, that you're going to place that tag in and we'll fill up that hole with uh, concrete and then place the nail and the tag inside inside that hole and once the concrete dries again those little ribs keep uh, prevent it from pulling up. A little trick also is once you put the nail to the tag you can bend the nail over a little bit so that when you put it into the wet concrete as it sets, it, it won't lift up either. Um, other things you're going to see us use to mark is, let's say we're going to be um, staking out something and for some reason one of the offsets or something lands on, on concrete or on a rock or on footing. Um, and if we can't get a nail in there, then we're going to mark it up the best way we can. We can use um, use just a marker where you know put an X, and on the lath I'll usually say you know um, X on rock or X on footing or X on concrete, X on sidewalk, what have you. So a, a temporary point is usually going to be um, black marker. A pencil uh, I'm going to use for myself until I establish a better point. So I might use that as, as a reference, uh, a little crow's foot if we're going to do a chalk line or something like that. So you might come across some of our pencil marks. And um, normally it was to establish um, a line in order to set a better point. A, a paint pen. It's paint. It's a yellow paint. This one's yellow. Um, I use these a lot for uh, control points on uh, sidewalks and stuff. Anything that's going to have to last a while, um, I, I use the paint pens. They last longer than the um, than the markers, and so on a on a control point and such, um, I use a paint pen. And also, you don't you need to use a can of paint to uh, put a point number or what have you. You can write it right next to it, and it's uh, nice. And um, they come in a bunch of different colors. Last thing here is a, is a scribe. Um, so if, uh, other than like control points, um, I really don't scribe anything, but if you come across one of our markings, um, or, you know, maybe we have a benchmark and it's a control point, uh, and it's a scribed X. So we'll use these, uh, scribes and then a straight edge and then scratch or scribe the, um, X or whatever we need to, uh, into the concrete. So this only works well on uh, obviously flat concrete. You really can't scribe an X on something that's uh, that's unfinished. You can, but it doesn't look too good. So and then in, in, in conjunction with this, once you get the X scribed, we use um, sometimes a marker or the paint pen to go over it to kind of highlight where that scribe is. So I hope that helps. Um, we use a lot of different nails 
and uh, spikes and tacks and markers to mark a, a variety of points, be it a, uh, a rough grade point, a, a, a stake point, or a reference um, in, our, in, our, in our control point. So um, before you assume anything or um, if you kind of want to know what you're looking for, always ask your friendly neighborhood surveyor and, and ask, uh, hey, um, uh, how, how'd you mark them? What color flagging is, is, is there? Um, should, should I be looking for nails or hubs? And, um, you know, because we like to stay somewhat consistent. And, and if there's ever a change, we'll normally, um, you know, paint the top of the lath or, or you know, have, have, have some type of communication saying, hey, look at this. You know, we went from hubs and, uh, and you know, we had to put a C nail in later on. And so it's, it's, it's marked on the lath. So if you see something on the lap that says C nail and footing or um, nail and um, nail and concrete, now you kind of know what you're what you're looking for. Thanks a lot. Email if you have any questions.